<laughs> I need some sound effects. Yes, we will. <laughs> we will have some sound effects coming soon. Welcome to the Dudes to Dads podcast. The mission of Dudes to Dads is to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't, but let's have some fun trying. So, Alan, I think this is podcast number four, isn't it? Four, yeah, we're already at four. Four. <laughs> it feels like we've been doing this for years. Yeah, it's only been like four episodes. I know. We're now seasoned vets. We are season vets, and boy, do we have a great show lined up for you today. Um, you know, we, we've done some segments. We've we've sort of been playing with stuff, getting our groove on, mm-hmm. trying to figure out where you know some getting some feedback from people and kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't work. But sure, um, got some good stuff for today. So we got you know the stuff to do. Yes, what do we want to do with our kids? How do we spend some time doing that? And uh, I, I actually had some things. I was telling some stories with my kids, so I want to kind oh, of cool. share that. Okay, and, and it was a great great experience. And then we're going to move into the battlefield, and there was an incident. You know, I'm sharing some personal stories, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to yeah, get too personal, you, you but have, yeah. uh, you know, with my four year old and her falling asleep, and so we're going to talk about that. Battle and how <laughs> okay. exciting that was! That's always a fun part. Yeah, and also I came across uh, after that. We're going to do uh, some product recommendations. We call it Supercharge. Yes, and <laughs> aptly named because you have to charge your credit card, probably. <laughs> yes. In fact, um, that's on a future show. I actually have a, a, a cool product to share, but it's it's okay. it's on another show. Um, uh-huh. This uh, I've got one for this show. But oh, okay. Yeah, I've I've got them all lined up. I'm really <laughs> excited about some of these products. Right on. I've got to share them with people. All right. Um, and mail. Uh, we had some feedback, and actually, and this uh, this mail was actually from a woman. Oh, okay. So uh, a so woman you... caught our podcast okay. and wrote in, and that cool. was kind of interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, and then we're going to move into some homework, some dad's homework and sort of some tips to maybe improve your relationship with your child. After dad's homework, uh, we've got a great little segment that we're, uh, we're going to, we're testing a new name for the segment. It, right. It's yeah. called light her fire. And I don't know why I didn't think about this before. Right. But I didn't tell you the history on this is, uh, my mother who is an author and seminar speaker wrote a book called light her fire. Yeah. And so that, it, it totally came to makes me. Sense. It yeah. totally makes sense. Uh, so I got the licensing rights on that. One. Um, it's a New York Times bestseller. New York Times bestseller. She really taught cool. classes for years. Yeah. Uh, it really, you know, really was successful. Yeah. So it's called Light Her Fire: How to Ignite Passion and Excitement in the Woman You Love. So, oh. so through that, there's definitely tons of tips. Sure, and the things. insight in that book. It's, and use. it's not all about romance. Sure. It, a lot of it is, but it's also just about how to treat your woman and how to, you know, basically do things right so that yeah. you get what you want too. Right. And everyone's happy. <laughs> yeah, it kind of works that way. Um, so that works. After Light Her Fire, we're going to go into a debate. Okay. Uh, you and I. We're going to debate? We're going to debate. Well, how am I not prepped for this? <laughs> well, that's the exp- that's the and, and we're going to talk Good about thing I like to argue, uh, not capital punishment. Uh, <laughs> I hope not. But punishment for your kids okay. and whether spanking is appropriate or not. Capital punishment for your kids. <laughs> um, and and your thoughts on that? Okay. And uh, be curious. I mean, there's no right or wrong. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, there is right or wrong according to me, but <laughs> uh, you know, different people have different right. perspectives. We don't so have a moderator. We're going to so talk about a that. True debate. And we're not within striking distance of each other. There's, <laughs> we're sitting across a table, which I'm not sure either of us could reach. Yeah, so I we'll can be move good. the table, though. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to we're gonna close off with a quote of the day. And we like to do that. We like to close off with a quote of the day. Um, sometimes it's you know serious, sometimes funny. Today we are on the serious side. And we're going to talk uh, a little bit more serious. And uh, so let's get started. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. So let's get started with stuff to do. Yes. So I was... Uh, talking with my son the other day. Okay. And he, he always, I mean, my kids, when they go to sleep, they like stories. I mean, we tell story or we read stories. We read books all the, I mean, that's kind of our nightly ritual. We read books. Uh, my son is six. Six. So we read books. And so one of the things I have done occasionally is I make up a story. Mm. Just out of my head. You know, I just pick something, <laughs> start making up a story, 
<laughs> and he absolutely loves it. Yeah. Even if it's the dumbest thing in the world because it's not a story he's heard. You like pull items from like, oh, look at the scissor monster. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No, it's it usually has something to do with like some sort of animal, what they're gonna eat, and then I I somehow, while I'm thinking of it, try to like teach a lesson. Okay. I don't know how, but you know, some <laughs> about being nice or sure, you know, sure. some something stupid. Yeah. It's not really stupid, but you know, <laughs> yeah, well, not yeah. to him. No, it's awesome no. To him. and so one of the things I thought was really cool, and I, I don't know how this came about, but I had said to him, I said, Why don't you tell why don't you tell a story? You know, oh, instead okay. of me telling it. Yeah. And he said, Well, why don't you start? <laughs> and so I started I get in the zone, Dad. Yeah. Come so on. so I started I started telling a story and it was about like some whale and being nice to other whales and whatever. As and whales often are. Yeah. And so I start talking and I said, Okay, your turn. And yeah. he completely picked it up. What? Right where I left <laughs> off and went into the story. That's awesome. And then and and, and so we did this thing. We went back a couple of times back and forth. And yeah. maybe he did it for like a minute or two. Yeah. But he started telling a story. Says, "Okay, your turn, Dad." Yeah, and it was the coolest thing. And I, and I mean, one just because of to hear their creativity, sure, sure, you know. But two, well, it also kept me on my toes. I mean, it's, as it gets later in the night, yeah, like, wait, what happened? Um, so that was it. I, I thought it was an interesting way of, of keeping a little bit more engaged yeah. than just reading a book. Um, and that just kind of organically, I kind of give props to my son for that one. That's really cool. I mean, that's yeah. given him like some skill sets that he's going to probably adapt a little bit later. You know, it's one of those things that I, I, it's like improv comedy troupe. You know, right. like he's getting a little sample of that, being six years old and making up stories on the fly. Yeah, I mean, and they're and you're, get stuck past it. They're that. amazingly creative, <laughs> amazingly creative. So that That's was so cool. that was pretty cool. So you should record some of those. One, of those you know, I don't want. Maybe we can call it like "Pass the Torch" or something like that. You can you can come up with some creative name, sure, or maybe sure. whoever holds something is the one telling the story, or you yeah. know, something like that. Right. And I, I think kids of any ages. I mean, my my daughter's four and. You know, she, I've tried it with her. In fact, the next day I tried doing it with her. She wasn't as apt to try it. She was a little bit sure. embarrassed, not embarrassed, but a little frustrated. A little like, couldn't think of something. Yeah, yeah. We and did. so I kind of tried to help her along. And yeah. I said, okay, well, no, I'll continue with the story. I didn't want her to get frustrated. So <laughs> um, so we did that. You think it's because of the age demographic? I think it's the age or the know, child. Or the child. Or yeah, because there's certainly child or children at that age that can sure. just ramble and tell a story. <laughs> It, Apple Jacks. Yeah, I think it just depends on the child. <laughs> right. My my daughter just wasn't interested in it yeah, as much, yeah. so like, which is oh. cool. You know, like, I'm too pretty for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> not going to make those superficial words. Right? Yeah, not yet. Anyway, <laughs> no. Um, so, it, 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 but it was cool. So I, I, you know, call it passing the torch or telling made up stories. I, yeah. I thought it was a cool thing. That so. is really cool. Right on. So next we've got the battlefield. All right. And so this was this was about my daughter. And she's, like I said, she is four years old, and we we were driving. Our whole family's driving. My wife, myself, okay. my son. They're in the back. Yeah. And my daughter was, I guess, no better word other than yelling. <laughs> you know, it's it's whining, expressing her anger, expressing in her a feelings, very vocal and, and, manner. And we're not even really sure what it was, but she was upset at something that had happened. Was she and, just like crying? Sort of uh, or saying stuff. Yeah, was cr- it was more of a whining, loud, sort of crying but thing. Anything you could understand. I'm trying to. Re- I don't. It, I don't even remember what it was because I was trying not to listen to it. <laughs> I th- I don't know if I turned up the An radio or what. Daddy skill. Yeah. <laughs> Ign- ignoring. Um, no, I just you know I'm not going to feed into it. I knew you know right. whatever. So and I thought maybe she was a little tired because she had. Uh, Gone to bed late the you know the night before or whatever yeah. so so I'm sitting there she's she's sort of yelling she's like dad I can't do this or whatever and all of a sudden it stops mm-hmm. like literally mid sentence okay I turn around and she's asleep <laughs> <laughs> and so I we, my wife and I start laughing <laughs> and we look at each other like she's four <laughs> she's four years old yeah, like that's yeah. that's why she was doing that You're right you know? right and so it, it's this thing that. <laughs> you you can get so frustrated and so mad. I mean, this you know my little daughter's yelling at me or you know being defiant or whatever. Yeah. The reality is she's just tired. Yeah. <laughs> and she doesn't have the emotional or social maturity to, to go, even say, dude, I'm really tired. Right yeah. Now. I mean, once in a while she actually can say that, but <laughs> this was just like mid sentence. Yeah. I'm I'm yelling. I'm screaming. I'm whining. And then <laughs> <laughs> just out. It was it was, was it was quite amusing. Yeah. 
it was it's t- it was just it was really really amusing. <laughs> but but the idea on the battlefield, I think, what what I was getting at was just to to realize that sometimes it's not what you think it is. Yeah, you know, and the the child might be really tired, might just be needy, might just be something else, and yeah. so you get these frustrations. And when you as a parent, you keep that in perspective. Yeah, it becomes a lot easier to deal with it. Because I, I get yeah. frustrated really. Qu- I mean, my my fuse is pretty short as far as getting frustrated <laughs> right. with like, especially with whining and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But when I'm in the mode of understanding and saying, you know what, she's really tired. Mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah. Like, you have a lot more tolerance and you you deal with it a lot with a lot more care. Sure, sure. That you're apt to solve the problem, not get as much you know as much or as frustrated by your yeah. Family. And it's like you're letting her kind of tire herself out in some level, you know. Yeah, just like funny. oh, okay, it's she's like, four it's years like old. A boxer and you hold them against the ropes, you know. <laughs> just like you just say, yeah, go ahead, come and punch me. Keep yeah, going, keep going, keep going. Tire right. yourself out. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I had it, it kind of on a dude related note. I uh, remember this was years ago, and she's probably gonna kill me for telling you this, but um. And, and the listeners, this uh, a friend of mine was over, and um, I could tell she was tired. And she did the kind of kid thing where she's like trying to pick on you and poke you and whatever. Right. And I was really tired. And I go, So, in my weird psychology moment, I go, How about just be quiet for like five minutes? I just need like five minutes of rest. <laughs> but she ended up falling asleep before I did. <laughs> so, so I wo- she woke up mad at me. She's like, I'm so frustrated that you were right and I was tired. I didn't even know it. <laughs> it, it, it sometimes you just don't even know. And, you you just know, don't mean, know. Whether yeah. you're four years old or you're an adult, you just, <laughs> yeah. you know, you, you get tired yeah. and you just got to just be aware of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and admit to yourself. <laughs> you know, as when we're uh, single and going crazy, it's like it's about rallying, you know. Oh, just, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've got to get my energy up. I got to you know, keep going. But when you're in a, you know, father of two and you've worked all day you, yeah. you have there's no shame in saying yeah. that you're tired oh sh- even now single i'm like yeah i'm tired i'm going to sleep <laughs> friday night whatever <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> all right so we've got a product recommendation here on our supercharged segment uh the baby sign language have you ever heard of this uh, baby sign language yeah kind of i <laughs> I immediately thought of Project X and the monkeys in the Matthew Broderick movie. <laughs> I don't know why. That's a horrible thought because these are children and not apes. However, right. apes are very smart. They are. So well, And they have trouble communicating via ver- verbally. Exactly. So, so like, it's that's kind of how I, I fictioned yeah. it. So. so we got this as a gift when we were... Uh, you know, first pregnant. And yeah. I'm like, what? We. The? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, did you say, because I said we are pregnant? Yeah, I well, laughed because okay. we were when we were pregnant. It's, <laughs> it's okay, here's the thing. You're going to learn this. <laughs> you are both pregnant. <laughs> uh, okay. She may be carrying the baby. Yes. But you're both pregnant. It's this weird <laughs> terminology that okay. I, I, I was not comfortable with either. <laughs> but it's kind of like, yes. We're getting married, you know. Yes, we're pregnant. Yeah, it's yeah. like we're pregnant together. Sure, it's the, sure. really the only time that you're going to pretend that you're involved with it, because <laughs> right. everyone's going to exclude you. Nobody pays attention to you right. as a dad, you know, or yeah, as a guy. Yeah. Just yeah. get used to it. Sure, sure. So you you take what you can. Yeah, you know, so oh, that's hey, cool. We're that you did that actually. So. It's just kind of funny. But segueing back <laughs> to the product, uh, so the baby sign language, and we got this thing, and it, it we put in the tape, and it's like. You know, I I was not as very familiar with regular sign language. Hold as on, it is. Uh, the tape, oh, it's tape. Uh, was it a DVD? Sorry, uh, DVD. It was I, a DVD. I oh, said okay. I said tape. I thought it was like a really it, old product that someone gave maybe you. Maybe an A track. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was a disc player. <laughs> exactly. It was. A- it was on 35 millimeter film. <laughs> I put up my real projector and we watched it. I am old school. I'm not ashamed. So we've got a DVD okay. of this. Well, I streamed yeah. it online. Uh, right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and modern. It was on my phone. <laughs> and was, so we got this baby sign language and I was like, what the heck are we going to do with this? And of course it was you know way too early, but yeah, it, this is stuff actually works. And what it is, is that you, because your child cannot really speak, they right. can kind of, Yell and you know do whatever before a certain age. Usually. Before a certain age, right? Yeah. When they're a baby, they you know they cry or they whine or they do certain things to get your attention and do this. But what it is is that the baby learns the sign language, and our son, we did it with our my son, my first child, yeah. and it was actually really cool, and it worked because he would be able to sign like and most common things are like I want more food, yeah, you know yeah. I'm thirsty, I want water, milk, whatever, and so it was a way that they would be able to communicate with you and, and tell you that. And, and so I would highly recommend this. I yeah. Mean, you know, a lot of people, it's kind of weird. And 
experts talk about how wonderful it is, but do they explain how to teach your baby to? Yeah, they watch a video. Way? They watch the video. The baby you the sit baby the, watches. Yeah, it? like you sit the baby in front of the video and you kind of teach them. And then there was like it's, flashcards as well. Oh, okay. Um, and so you would say like water, and then you'd you know show the water, drinking yeah. the water, and they, they, the woman would sign. And you know, I mean, it, it it's very repetitive. You know, they sure. would watch it three hundred and seventy six <laughs> times. You start sure. learning the music and start singing <laughs> it while you're in your car by yourself. They bust and, out a guitar. The baby busts yeah. out a guitar with you. Yeah, no, back that's up. a whole other thing about <laughs> music. Oh, we need to do a segment. Yeah, about that's music. Be awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Write that down. Yeah. Write that down. <laughs> okay. We got to do a segment about music. <laughs> um, and so yeah, so it's this baby sign language. It's, it's a great product. I recommend it. There's mo- many of them out there. Of course. Um, yeah. But don't be afraid of it. Yeah. So it's something that you can learn. You know, it gives you a little bit of a head start of communicating with the child, and yeah. it gives them a little bit of a voice to not get so frustrated. So that when they are hungry, they put their little fingers together, yeah. or they put the little W up on their chin. I mean, I still remember you put all a those. W. Yeah, after Throw water, a sign, you know, it's like a water, you know, <laughs> West Side, yeah. and water. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful. He's throwing <laughs> yeah, yeah, gang signs, which, or does he want which water? Which W is he throwing? Up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so you got to make sure you know what, what we're talking about. So <laughs> I, I do like that idea because I think one of the things that's scary for me as someone who does not have children is the lack of communication phase. I mean, they understand certain degrees what's going on, but they also um, it's hard to understand what's going on with them. And when they're toddlers and they're age, speaking age, you can kind of reason with them. Totally. With well, children, no, you can't. Well, yeah. to some degree. You understand what's going on. Okay, oh, the single man reason. thinking they can yeah, reason well, with the to child. To some degree, okay. I get, I get there's going to be way different nuances, and I'm obviously very naive about this. But uh, but that fact that they um, they can communicate at that early age, yeah, yeah. that's cool. Because yeah. then you know if they're hungry or if they just... Well, they see, that's, and that's the frustrating part when, you're, when you are raising the child you know, very early on is that you feel like they totally understand you. And oftentimes, they might, mm-hmm. but their brain and their communication is not there, and all these things. And so, you think that they're so much smarter than they mm-hmm. are, or like <laughs> like is, or that you're communicating with them in this yeah. way. And the reality is, is like the brain still hasn't to- totally developed, and so they yeah. don't really know a lot of stuff. They probably some, know as much as some pets. You know, like pets will kind of understand some things, but if you say, "Hey, go yeah. get the paper," they'd be like, "What?" what yeah, I mean, about? yeah. The, it, it, I guess you can compare it to that. I don't like, want sort to of the, the early stages it. of a puppy. Yeah, you yeah know? right. Um, but they kind of understand certain elements, and and you do you talk in sort of caveman like things <laughs> where you just say one word, yeah. water. You yeah, don't say, yeah. "Would you like a glass of water with your you know pizza?" I mean, you don't. <laughs> you, like, you don't talk <laughs> thorough uh, <laughs> thorough sentences. You just right, talk right. the one word. So you learn a lot of that. Yeah, so, anyways, yeah. I, I think that's a cool. It's a cool product cool, to kind yeah. of explore. Yeah. So next up, we've got the mailbag. Okay. And the mailbag, we actually got a letter from a woman. And it was there was a woman letter, listen, huh? There was a woman. Well, I say letter. <laughs> it's like my 35 millimeter. Right. It's totally Do I have to totally date myself just because I am 40 we years old? We are the same age, bro. So. Uh, I know. <laughs> I'm totally there with you. <laughs> so a woman emailed us yeah. via Pigeon. Okay. <laughs> and said, her name was Catherine. Catherine, And she right. said, how do I get my husband to listen to your show? Okay. I thought that was an interesting question. Okay. You don't. You don't want the husband to listen to no, it? No, I'm saying you can't force him to listen to it. Yeah, you can. How? Hey, listen to this. Really? I'm your wife. Would you listen? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, because I'm awesome and supportive. So uh, I, I got a related story. <laughs> yeah. So I had a meetup uh, last week or the week before. Yeah, yeah. And you know the local meetup that we do here. Sure. And <laughs> there was a new guy who came in. And so we're like, you know, everyone goes around the room and kind of says, hey, what's going on? And hey, yeah. you know, about you and learn about the person. And said, you know, hey, what made you come in here? And you know, various people said, well, I have a newborn, blah, blah, blah. No joke. Straight face says, my wife made me come. <laughs> <laughs> Which is totally amusing to everybody there. No, it, I mean, it was truthful. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah. I mean, totally. He's just like, I mean, I think he's glad he came. But sure. he's like, my wife told me to go. Yeah, yeah. Like she said, I think you need this. <laughs> and so I had no interest in this at all until my wife said, "We made me come." <laughs> yeah, and all of a sudden I was interested. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I think for Catherine, <laughs> you know, how do I get my husband? I, I think like many men, you have to somehow make him think that it was his decision. Um, I mean, <laughs> yeah. that works both ways. I was gonna say it probably works <laughs> both ways in that that regard. And I, you know, I think there's coaxing. You don't have to make anybody do anything. You can kind of encourage. So you just you don't download all 
our podcasts onto his, you know, or like set them up on the his <laughs> phone the or Matrix. something. You don't just pull over lever. And, I know, no, but you like through. set them up on book as bookmarks or something <laughs> on the phone. Yeah, trick them into it. Yeah, <laughs> or email them and email text them and, and say, "Hey, I think you really need you this." Should really listen. To no, this. I I think it's uh, you know, it's the same way with the group with the meetup group. Yeah. You know, I've talked to numerous dads and I say, "Hey, I've got this meetup group. I don't really recruit." Mm. Because somebody's got to want to listen to it, you know, sure. and it's the same thing. I mean, this isn't going to be interesting. I mean, to everybody, you sure. know, certain yeah. people are going to find it interesting, helpful, funny, whatever oh, yeah. they is, absolutely, whatever they you know they get out of it, and that's ultimately what we're trying to do. But you can't really force somebody to do something, right? right. And so that actually, for me, triggered something in the relationship that I would, I'd probably want to talk to them a little deeper. Oh, okay. you know, I mean, <laughs> where, where she's. Sort of scoping around, okay. looking for something for her husband. Yeah, yeah. There's something going on. Sure, yeah. I think there's something a little bit more deep than it that. It probably is. It's similar to the guy who you know said that his wife made her come. I mean, that's basically right. right there. It's like, right. okay, come here now or go join this thing. I think it would be really good for you. At the same time, I shouldn't be as critical as that oftentimes women are you know, much more in tune with what's happening and, sure. and, and sort of understand say, you know what, maybe this would be helpful well, for to you. To some degree, maybe he's a new dad and just needs to learn some things. And he was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I think I would hit that stage going, look, any advice that can help without saying that, I probably wouldn't ask for it in that context. But if someone said, Hey, you should check out this podcast or Hey, you should check out this meetup group. Um, I would take their advice. I'd be like, oh, all right, maybe I'll, I guess I'll it go depends. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm new at, it. I don't really understand what's going on. Like, I, I don't know. I never did this. I barely changed a diaper once, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, I mean, trust some me, help. it's not that exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll take your word for that. <laughs> we talked about that on the previous <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we did a callback. Yeah. It's, oh, I love it. I just love doing it. I love it. Oh, come here. <laughs> let me change. No, actually, you know what? There's some people, I mean, when it's your own child, you don't mind. It's yeah. just, you know, it's what you do. But I wouldn't, I would never put fun. Next to it. <laughs> so, all right, let's get into some dad's homework. Okay. Uh, we want to talk about, you know, how do you improve your relationship with your child? And so what we like to do is we not only like to talk about the serious issues here on this podcast, but we like to actually give people homework. And this is homework that should be fun to do. It's not the homework in school that you just, oh. yeah, I don't want to do that stuff. do this homework. So... This was a uh, a fellow meetup person, okay, uh, who had done this successfully and shared this with the group, and so okay. I thought this was great. That's why I wanted to share it. Yeah. So one of the things, one of the times, and I think it's the battlefield that we had talked about was it was during dinner. I think it was the last yeah, episode we right, talked about right. you know battles during dinner and how to make that a little bit easier. So one of the things that he does during dinner, and I think it happens you know, once a week on a designated day, is they actually play a game during dinner. And so this is interesting because for me, I've always thought not to distract from dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, like for us, like we don't have toys at the table. We don't play games. We don't do, we do the feast thing, which I talked about also, which we, maybe we go around and talk to each other. Sure, sure. But I never really thought about it at a game standpoint. Right. He actually will either get a card game, a board game, or like just ask questions and make it a game with, huh. with, the, with the kids. And so I thought it was really interesting. He said it goes incredible well, incredibly really? well. Yes. Yeah. And, and one of the reasons, too, is like if your kid's not eating, you say, well, by the time it gets to, you better take a bite. You know? So like Trivia Pursuit with an actual pie? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> totally. And so one of the things you can do, like I think one of his favorites was he has like a, um, a stack of card questions, mm -hmm. you know, not like difficult life questions, but they can be funny. They can be whatever. <laughs> I mean, like, so the questions would be just sort of random. I, you know, played this with my kids the other day. My yeah. wife was gone. And so um, we were talking about, you know, dressing up. Yeah. And what are cool ways to dress up? Um, and what would that look like? You know. Okay. And so I said, well, I'd like to dress up as a policeman. And if I did that, I would have maybe uh, a badge. Mm -hmm. You know, I might even have some handcuffs. Mm -hmm. I might have a uniform on. You know, I and, have and, an and, overinflated and, sense of authority. Yeah. <laughs> and kind of, and I would talk about kind of what that meant. And, yeah. so, and, and so it was a little bit more in depth. And so. They took that as well, and then they started talking about it. And That's so, cool. yeah, my you know my daughter's talking about uh, some superhero. She was, I think it was like you know super or Wonder Woman or something yeah, or Superwoman. Yeah, yeah. And so I said, well, what does it look like? She says, well, you'd have an S on your front, you know. And and they start to think about it. And so we went around the room. We went around a couple of times, and it just kind of made it a little lighter, yeah. you know, because the sort of, how'd your day go? What'd you do at school? What'd you, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? And they don't really want to talk about it. They don't. Yeah. 
You know, I know as a kid I didn't want to. Right. There was no, it was not exciting to tell my parents per se about my day unless I, something really exciting happened. That's that's almost my opinion now. Like when people ask me how's your day, and, I, and no offense, I mean my girlfriend will ask me, you know, how's your day going? You know, that's wonderful. I appreciate that. Um, but if nothing really exciting happened, I just I'm like, eh. I was sitting in front was of the computer. Was there a better question? That's this? why I said, yeah, we do that sometimes. We try to figure out a better question. And say, hey, did you know? It's a did you learn something today? Right. Or, you know, you ask it sort of a different question. <laughs> um, so yeah. that's the homework is, is, you know, to play a game at dinner. Um, you know, dinner time, I just, it's always, you know, it's the, the most likely time that you'll sit together. Sure. You know, if you're able to do that as a family, not, yeah. every, not everybody has that opportunity. No, right, yeah. But if you do, you know, or if it's just one-on-one or whatever, it's just, you know, to try to play a game during the dinner to engage, you know, at least the younger children for sure. Sure. Um, and that, you know, that sort of works. That's so, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I had mentioned light her fire. Yeah. And we've got another tip that I think is, is pretty good. Okay. It's now this doesn't work for everybody because your wife or girlfriend or whatever has to work because she has to work outside the house in order to do this. Oh, okay. There's variations. Well, could you it. just get her out of the house somehow? Like, hey. No. So, so, well, so the tip or the, the, the segment today is about sending her a gift okay. at work. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. So there's a specific reason of doing it at work. Yeah. So what happens is there's this dynamic, and especially if she's in an office or some other sort of di- that it's a public display of your affection. Sure. Women really appreciate that. Sure. They yeah. really like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's something where, you know, it's great to, you know, you bring home flowers or you bring home a gift or mm-hmm. something like that. And not all women care about gifts. Some do, some don't, you know, different love languages, whatever. Right. But even if it's something small, let's say it was flowers or it was something of thinking about you, whatever, sending her a gift at work is yeah. just, it does really, really well. Yeah, and I can see that happening because it's also not only uh, they enjoying it, but then people around them are like, oh, you got flowers, yeah. where they come from, and that type <laughs> totally. of thing. So, you know, so it, yeah, I could, it, that totally I works. recall my mom doing this for my dad yeah. often, you know, <laughs> not, not ridiculously often that people were like, okay, that's enough, yeah, you know, yeah. but I, I mean... <laughs> You know, I remember like my dad would either take a picture or the people around him in the office because I mean he worked in this large office. Yeah, and it just I think it was and he appreciated that so much and that was yeah. my mom doing it. Right, right. You know, which I think well, at first she wrote the book, but at, yeah, <laughs> at first you get embarrassed. Sure, you know, sure. Because I think there was some there were some things like she sent him this huge monkey or something. <laughs> it was like this love thing. It says you know I want a monkey around or something. It was something totally that would. Make yeah. me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and uh, but you know, I, I know that it was appreciated, and vice yeah. versa. I think yeah. you know, my mom. I mean, she was self-employed, so it wasn't like she had this office environment. Right, but, right. Um, but yeah, I mean, being able to do that sort of public, you know, display of affection, and you know, I've tried. You know, I've done that. It's uh, and and it's and it's nice. It's a yeah. nice thing. It's a nice change, and, and it does you know show people as well. And it's not really showing off. It's just. You know, you want people to know how you feel about you know, your significant other. Sure. No, absolutely. So, and why not show them at the place that they're going, spending the most time? Right. You know, so I think it does work that way. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, and if you're a guy that shows you that, you know, if you do it for your girl, you know, that's my territory. Right. <laughs> it's a little possessive. <laughs> right. Exactly. See that woman? Name. She's with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't very well pee on her. So, <laughs> so yeah. So that's, that's one of the things I think is a, you know, you can kind of take with you is, is uh, you know, send her a gift. Yeah. It's just a small gift, even if it's something small. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're gonna do if it has to be a holiday, birthday, whatever, that's okay too. Right. But you know, even try to do it, you know, when you don't need to. Right, right. So cool. All right. So I got a debate for you. Okay. We're on to the debate segment. We're, okay, we're debating now. We're, should I get an argument mode? Yeah, maybe turn it up. Turn up the volume. Pump up the volume. I, as I was saying, it's because Alan was turning I up, am literally doing turning up if the you levels. See me doing on things, the, don't worry about it. I'm <laughs> trying to alter levels because I don't know. Yeah, well, we're seeing we're we're experimenting. (laughs) Exactly, we're trying to see if you know what what audio sounds good as well. We're experimenting. The visual looks different from what it did before. So, is that good? We'll see. We're good. (laughs) So you look good. You look good here. Oh well, I don't mean physically. I mean the audio. (laughs) I have been working out. (laughs) Okay, I'm glad (laughs) it's noticeable. (laughs) Is my diet working? (laughs) So, anyway, back to the reality. Um, The the debate was about spanking. 
Um, okay. I've had some recent conversations with some other dads, and there's such a debate about whether it's good or bad. And typically, I see that it comes from whether they were, you know, hit or spanked yes. or something like that. Yeah. So I wanted to find out what your thoughts were on that. You know, having a child, do you spank? Do you not? And or do you have a reason why? Um, right off the bat, I'll say I'm not opposed to it. I think that it it's only in really I wouldn't say extreme circumstances, but like sometimes to get through to some people, they they just need to get something whacked. Now, <laughs> I will say uh, my grandmother never was a spanker. I accidentally th- hit the mic with my head <laughs> right as you said getting whacked. It was a sound effect. It was it was like part of the the, <laughs> the uh, organic growth of the show. It's. <laughs> um, I noticed my grandmother level of discipline. I was always a good kid mm-hmm. for the most part, you know. But my grandma uh, with with some of my younger cousins, um, she never spanked them, but she did this snatching thing. She would grab their arm and be like, you know, really sternly stop it. And like and right. they just oh. and she was a little lady. She was like five foot tall, but she scared the hell out of them. Sure. And so there are alternative methods of doing things that kind of like kind of resemble discipline without. I'm not a big fan of like t- trying to talk them down to stop doing that. It, unless, How come? You, unless, well, because in some cases, like some cases, um, if you can reason with them and they reason back, great. Some kids are not that type of people, and you need to get real stern. Like, hey, and well, it, getting stern with somebody is different. From verbal yes. is different than putting a hand on somebody. right, and that's where I'm like, I don't. That's where I want to be as a parent. I want to be the types of if I get stern, you know what's up, and I don't have to do anything. Right, and I, I want to be able. That's but the ultimate factor. question is if you're okay with spanking. Or yeah, I'm okay with it. You are. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not. So that's right. why. I'm yeah, <laughs> no, I know you're not. I actually know this about you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so I was never spanked. Mm-hmm. Um, now I can say my sisters who are older. Mm. I have two older sisters. I do recall a little bit of spanking to them. Okay. At least if I was spanked, I don't remember it. (laughs) Um, But it's interesting, and having gone through parenting classes and all these other things, and also now having children, I don't feel like there's ever a reason, or I shouldn't even put it like that. I don't feel like it resolves anything. And here's why. I have this... I don't want my kids to ever fear me. Now, people will argue that because they rule by fear and it's something that they feel like keeps people in check or Mm. or whatever. Um, When you raise healthy children and you raise children with good self-esteem and everything, they do things because of how they will feel, Mm. not because of how my parents are going to react or how my parents are going to feel about it. You know, it's something that's innate within them and you teach them as a parent to say, okay, is this a good decision for me to do or not a good decision to do? Right. Now if they make a bad decision, me punishing them, how does that teach them saying, you know, that's, that's the dile- dilemma is we're trying to teach them right or wrong. Sure. And I don't feel like the, the punishment or the hitting or, you know, any sort of physical does that or accomplishes that, Mm -hmm. you know, all it does is then prevent the fear or puts in the fear. So, and people will argue that because they'll say, okay, well, if they're going to be scared of it, then they won't do it. Right. You're right. That, that might be the case. I guess this for me is not wanting the fear. And you don't want to be, I don't want to be ruling by fear. No. And I agree with that statement actually. Um, and again, reason I, even if I condone it, I don't necessarily think I want to apply that to my life. Right. With my kids. I don't want to beat them. Because most of the time, and this is I learned a lot in these classes, is that we spank and yell and do it because we don't know what to do. Right, right. I mean, it's the, it's the lowest form of, you know, yeah. rebuttal and uh, is... Well, it's it's primate almost in right. that way because you see people like getting in arguments and getting in fistfights over some dumb thing. Yeah, and you really, that when you don't have tools to solve the problem... That's what you do. And the tools become fists and snapping. Right, and, right. You know. And so that's part of it for me is learning these new ways. And, you know, now, don't get me wrong. I get really frustrated <laughs> and really mad. I don't spank. I throw them through a glass All window. the time. <laughs> but no, what I do now, though, is if I start feeling myself getting to that level, yeah. I walk away. 
Okay. I actually just walk away. And my wife and I have this agreement where it's like, okay, oh, go, you're, you're up, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> but what if you're alone with them? Then I have to somehow... Just tie them up? I have to... No, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, it, it, granted, you're tested as a parent. Yeah, yeah. You're tested. Well, and again, th- that's where I'm like, I cross that line between saying, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it versus would I do it? No, I don't want to get to that point where I'm... I, I'm rather find rational solutions. And I... I see other people's kids being a certain way, and I'm like, that kid needs to be whack, dude. Like, that right. kid's insane. <laughs> Versus my own, you know, experiences, you know, even when I was a kid or my friends or whatever, you know, that was never a solution. I never saw my kids, my friends getting beat up by their parents or anything. Even my grandmother never. Oh, well, everyone did it smacked. behind doors. Yeah. They just, behind Can you go doors. home, please? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, no, it never was that that drastic, and, and I never really had to get beat. To, to understand because my form of discipline was like I was I didn't like making my family unhappy right and so that was enough if 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 my grandmother or my mother or my grandfather was disappointed in me that would be enough to make me want to stop doing whatever it was I'm doing right so um, I reacted to positive reinforcement a lot more than negative and so that's me though are some kids not like that I don't know I don't know it becomes like where's that nurture versus nature come up from right and so if you're like predisposed to be you know a jackass as a kid cause some people are there's a handful of winners and some losers it's just the way it works you know and do some kids need a little bit like hey stop that right and if you keep doing it guess what's gonna happen some right. form of punishment one of which might hurt well, you yeah and I think I mean one of the things I think your kids will learn is that you know without some sort of violent or I should say some sort of physical contact, you still raise your voice. And even raising your voice, you know, you want to sometimes limit that. And yeah. And here's the thing and why, and this kind of bleeds into the next or the, the the last segment, is and I think we talked about this before, is that kids model your behavior. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So if you want your child to grow up like that, that's what you do. And in fact, that leads us into the quote of the day. Awesome segue. Was that good? That's not, <laughs> and I'm new at this. This is great. <laughs> You're a natural. So, so the quote of the day, which happens to sort of go into that, and we could certainly debate that. We're going to have some other people on. The quote of the day is, be the type of man you want your daughter to be with. Yes. I so, totally agree with that. Who said that, was, that, by the way? Uh, it was this guy, Lyrical Master. He's on Tumblr. <laughs> on Tumblr. Lyrical Master? Yeah. Is he a rap artist? I don't know. He I'm spelled lyrical guess. quite... Uh, with, with a K? The, ways, the way that a young person would do it. <laughs> These whippersnappers yeah. these days. Yeah. Um, but that goes along exactly with what I was just talking about. Yeah. Is, you know, what do you want to show your children? Yes. And I see this because, you know, if my child or one of my children are getting mad and stomping away or yelling, guess where they saw that behavior? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, they got it from me or right. my wife. And right. so we have to be very conscious of that. And so the idea is, you know, what do you want your children to be like? Well, that's what you need to do. Yep. You know? Lead by example. Yeah. You yeah. lead by example. Yeah. And so that's a perfect thing, I think, to end on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got another good show next time. I've got, like I said, there's some product stuff I want to share and some other things. Cool. So you got anything else? No, I think we're good today. I think we've got to tell people how to get a hold of you. They can email us yes. at podcast at dudes2dads.com. That is T-O. That is a T-O. Yes. Dudes2dads.com. Right on. And uh, once again, thank you, Alan. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.